Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us on the second commissioning panel of Restart. You heard from my colleague Heather all about scripture.itv and Channel 4 yesterday, and today is the turn of factual and documentary. My name is Alice Redmond, and I'm content lead for Broadcast Intelligence's Commissioner Index, which is Broadcast's sister site, which profiles the commissioning wants and needs of all the top broadcasters you should be pitching to. And today I am joined by three of the best in factual and documentary commissioning, B. Jalmaya Patel from BBC, Danny Haran from Channel 4 and Guy Davies from Channel 5. We have an hour long session and lots to get through, so don't forget to ask any questions you might have for the panel using the Q&A and chat function. But let's get down to it. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, after what can be definitely called a challenging year, I think it'd be great if you could give me an overview of where factual programming is at for your channel. You know, are things back in production? How have the delayed shows been rescheduled? And how things are now working with the COVID protocols? And I know, Danny, you have a clip, so maybe would you like to start and we can show the clip? Sure, do you want me to have a, do you want me to give a quick overview first or do you want us to play the clip? Whatever you would prefer. Shall I just give you a tiny overview? first just of where we're at i think we so we will as many people watching this who are indie owners or exact producers or filmmakers will know that we did um about a year ago have to postpone cancel shelve some programs because we were in a fairly what we thought at that point a very fairly tight spot in terms of um our advertising is we were quite worried about this situation regarding the economy so we a lot of things were put on hold but actually and all for two reasons one is we were concerned about the the revenue but also we wanted to respond to covid in the changing world so we did a combination of uh commissioning some new things but also moving stuff into this year and in next year but we uh, did manage to get a lot in my department we got a lot um despite covid we still found quite a lot of things so for example we filmed a lot of our big series like sas a &E, first dates t first dates well the new series of that and the doghouse so we managed to despite covid get all of those productions uh filmed during that period with heavy covid strict protocols so we're in a i mean i would say we're in a good space in fact for a bunch of reasons one our, our programs are doing pretty well and are doing well on all four which is a big for us at the moment but so uh, we have seen a sort of uptick in, you know, in some of our titles as well which is really pleased to see so i would say of course i would say this right that we are in a really good place, we're doing more, I'm trying to go even bigger, get more money, get more hours. So I'm trying to do as much as I can to, to fight for that. I think we're in a good place. I think we can say that actual. I think actual is a good place because you know you see a lot of the drama companies or companies that might not have done television, they might have done but say factual space for broadcasters. So that is good, a lot of that. Um, and this is just this clip that I'm about to show, which is from Baby Surgeons, which is a series that has just gone on, actually, just finished on Channel 4. Um, I wanted to show this because we filmed it during COVID. Um, in London. We uh, deliberately filmed it because we potential that um, got into that uh, one more kind of space, but was was evolving that subject. So we did that in the hope that it could be a returner, it would get a younger audience, and actually we've seen it get um, a fifty percent young share, which is brilliant. Just on you know, audiences. Can I just show a little clip of um, yeah, that? That's... Thank you. Thank you. Um, can, I just, can I just quickly just add to that? Just just so you might think that doesn't look like a sort of potential return like one born, which um, you know had a lot of the tropes of 
um, all world passes through here. It's about relationships. It's about love. It's about our lives. But actually, that is a much more challenging subject. I think um, if you've watched the series, very challenging stories. In there. But we, you know, I think um, it's done really well. We're looking at whether we should do more. Um, and I think audiences are sort of up for more challenging subjects and sophisticated um, storytelling and, and subject matters. So um, I'm hoping it will do well. I mean, Wonderhood, who made it, did have done an exceptional job and filmed it, like I say, under quite heavy protocols with COVID. Um, did a great job. Nice. And so, Bija, how about you? How is Factual going at your channel? Um, you know, I think it's in a good place, actually. I mean, there are inevitably still some delays, in particular with series that rely on, you know, foreign travel. Um, but I think there's lots of programmes that have managed to adapt quickly and safely to deliver in the last year. I think what's interesting is that we are an industry of problem solvers. It's what people do in telly every day. You know, things never go to plan. And like COVID was like this ultimate problem that landed on us last year. And I think the industry responded to it brilliantly and really rose to that challenge. I think we know where there's changes in editorial needed, there was some fresh thinking. And when you look at the output um, and the quality and the range, it's quite fantastic to see things from Glow Up and Sewing Me in the competitive space um, to the other end to having Hospital taking you to the heart of the crisis mid pandemic. And at the other end of the spectrum, the detectives and forensics. I mean, having said that, you know, teams work bloody hard to deliver those programmes and we're really grateful for them because the fact is it all takes longer. There's more thought that needs to go into it to make sure that they are delivered safely and successfully, which I think, you know, they've done really well on. I mean, I think and the, the other thing I want to add, I mean, beyond, you know, it has been a really hard year for everyone, but I think, you know, it's also been a big year that includes us as an industry looking at the world around us and the industry's failings. And I think there's been real momentum, not just conversations, on action on diversity and mental health. And as we go back to a new, you know, a new model of working, I hope it is a new model. And it's not just kind of saying we're going back to the old model because actually there's change and traction, which I hope we build on going forward. Lovely. And Guy, last but not least, how about you? <laughs> Thanks. I mean, first I'd just like to thank the producers really, because I think that we've had a really, really hard year and uh, they've done a, an amazing job for us. Um, and I think that it's, you know, credit really has to go to uh, the teams that we work with because I think it's been extraordinary. I mean, I think we're, you know, I like uh, Danny Vigil, I'm, I'm, I think we are in a good place. Um, we've had some incredible ratings. If you look at, you know, our Yorkshire farm at 4 million and Ben Fogel in Chernobyl at nearly 4 million. Uh, you know, we used to strive for a million but now we're striving for two. So I think, you know, that I feel we're bucking the trend a little bit. Um, we've launched lots of new series. Um, we lost nearly, I think, 20% of what we were doing um, like this time last year. And to actually get those series out and to make them work has been fantastic. I think we've had real challenges with police and medical, which are now back up and running. So we've now got, you know, a large number of those sort of emergency series back in ready for this year. Um, and that's been, you know, that's been difficult. Um, and access has also been tricky, but I think it's coming back. I think we're probably in the space for more access. Um, and I think there's been real innovation. I mean, you know, there's the, the rise of the iPhone and the way that that's worked in terms of being able to shoot things. You know, we've had bubbles, we've had um, people sending links from their gardens to do shows, um, you know, and then make, you know, series that have done really, really well. So I think that that's, uh, that's a really interesting thing about how innovation has begun to, has, has blossomed in a way um, because of these challenges. And remote working, I think, will stay. I mean, I think that the remote working of edits, the remote working of getting incredible stuff that we couldn't have got otherwise, um, I think is, is, is really good, you know, and has been a real positive thing for us. Um, I think the protocols, have been a challenge. Um, I was just thinking about Rich House, Poor House, for example, uh, where we've had, you know, um, lots and lots of challenges in cleaning houses, in putting people in hotels, in reworking the way that that show works, because it's a big, it's a very big thing for us. Um, and that has been something which I think coinciding with the Ofcom Duty of Care new um, uh, guidance, 
actually, I think that's all been, you know, rather fortuitous in a way, because I think it's, 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 it's raised a lot of questions uh, about how we work, about how we treat contributors, and all of that has sort of come together a little bit with COVID. Um, and I think that that's been, um, you know, it's been an interesting time to sort of rework in a way, the way that we work on Factual. Um, so, you know, we've done a lot of, we've, lo we've launched loads of series. We've got, you know, our peak, I think our, our peak hour is up something ridiculous, like 40% um, in terms of viewing. And that, so that has been, it's been helped by dramas as well that we're now doing. But, you know, when you look at, I don't know, we did, we did Jane McDonald, for example, which we never thought we'd be able to shoot. And we found we were, you know, the, the production crew hired the cruiser and completely hired the whole thing so it could be COVID free. So there's been some real innovation. And I think, yeah, I think, I think we're in a good place. Yeah. Brilliant. And so kind of staying on the theme of reflection of the last year, it wouldn't be looking back if we didn't think about things like Tiger King, which defined everyone's March 2020 a little bit. So I just wondered, have the streamers getting into documentaries influenced your strategy? And what do you kind of make of these these really big successes they've been having. Um, BJ, if we start with you, because I think there's a clip you'd also like to play. There is. Um, I, of course it has. You know, it influences everyone. It ups ambition and scale. You know, we all inform each other as an industry, don't we? So I think, you know, if I see something like on another broadcaster, I always think, you know, um, how would we do that for the BBC? And I think, you know, that's a good thing. I think it's inspiring in terms of how it demonstrates if you find a compelling narrative, Young people have a huge appetite for dogs, which is ultimately exciting in how we find the best shape to tell stories. At the BBC, we've got, you know, we've got a good track record on what we now call box sets, but really are just kind of premium dogs. And, you know, they've grown across factual, not just in the dog scene. So we've had the rise of the Murdoch dynasty and the Trump show coming. And coming up, we have a new series on Robert Maxwell and something new in the vein of Ripper Files. And our version of this on BBC Three more recently was Hometown. And for what for us, what's key in these box sets, it's all about the variety that we have in these. And that might mean Orford, like in the case of Hometown, or Past Tense in the case of High, which we've got a clip off to show shortly. Or it could be, you know, present tense storytelling like the detectives. But, you know, each one of them needs to be distinct and different. And with that, it'd be great to show a clip of the new series we've got for BBC Three. Um, it's made by Blast Films. Hamish Ferguson is the commissioner on it. And it's the story of the Peru two. I mean, you might be familiar with them because they really did make the headlines at the time. But it'd be great if we could show that clip, please. Michaela McCollum, the local woman from Dungannon, who suspected of cocaine trafficking in Peru, was arrested along with Melissa Reed from Scotland as they tried to board a flight to Spain. That's me. Michaela McCallum, caught with 11 kilograms of cocaine hidden in their luggage. Age 19, I became one half of the Peru too. What's your nationality? Irish. And owner of the world's most infamous updo. They said they'd been forced to carry the drugs, but those claims turned out to be lies. You might wonder how a regular kid from rural Northern Ireland could wind up here, in a maximum security prison in South America. Michaela McCollum could be jailed for 15 years. My family certainly did. It was like someone had died. And the whole world seemed to have something to say about it. If they're drug dealers, if they're trying to smuggle cocaine worth one and a half million pounds, then they deserve all that they are getting. Pretty girls tend to think they're never getting stopped, the GQ, doing the same. And her family were pounded by the media. It is what people are talking about. One bad decision looks set to wreck my life. The big question was why? What made them do it? She obviously made the decision, but then what's behind it? Well, this is the story of how I got myself into this mess. <laughs> and... Kayla McCollum flew into Dublin, out of prison and out of Peru. How I managed to get myself out of it. How much speed? Everyone ready? OK, Michaela, let's go. So um, I think it's interesting because if you look at that, you know, most of the pre-titles, you know, it's not a new territory, but I think the treatment of that subject is, 
It's narrated directly from master interview by Michaela. So it's a direct unfiltered perspective and you're invited to make your own mind up about her. And that feels, you know, very BBC Three in its heritage, right back to our war on life and death row. But it's also quite relatable. I mean, ultimately it's a story of a girl from a small town who like most young people wants to travel and seeks adventure, but it's what happens next that's quite extraordinary. You know, and whilst it's glossy and the narrative and the key cell is, you know, is, is kind of quite important. I think it's worth remembering that it still is quite a cautionary tale as well, because within that narrative, within Michaela being front and centre of it, it still reveals the kind of brutal realities of the supply chain of party drugs and, you know, and the connections with South America. So it, it, it's something we're quite excited about as one of our new box sets. It looks amazing. Um, so Guy, how about you? What is your take on Netflix and Tiger King? Uh, well, I think that what what has happened, possibly more than anything, is that is 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 the sort of is the move to event led viewing. You know that 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 feeling of something being like big and um, and, so, and and we've been doing it for a long time in specialist factual. We've always done a lot of big sort of three night events and things like that. And I think that that I suppose is is what though that type of viewing experience is and what the audience is getting increasingly used to. And I think also that that's probably uh, the long form storytelling um, where you can you can really get into something. And I think that's being reflected probably most certainly, I think certainly on Channel 5, perhaps in True Crime. Um, we've, we've two, I think two years ago, maybe we did the murder of Charlene Downs, which worked really well for us as a, as a box set. And I think we're now beginning to look at that more and more. Our true crime this year has been incredibly successful and it has, the ones that have really succeeded have been that sort of, I suppose one might say a sort of Netflixy feel. Um, and I think that that's going to happen more. The other thing that's working is that that is really taking off on my five. So the clearly there's a there's a there's a, uh, a desire feel in the audience for that kind of storytelling now, uh, and I think that that's something that we need to we need to really take note of. Uh, and we've got more crime uh, coming in that sort of space. Um, I mean, obviously Netflix is a younger chan, you know, a, a younger service than us in a way. We're more. Uh, ABC One led in terms of our um, demo now, um, but uh, I think there's something I don't know what I call it the lure of the strange or something like that because I think if you look at some of the um, you think of you know three identical strangers or some of those sorts of pieces they are the sort of strange uh, twist and turn telling stories uh, and I think that that's certainly something that the audience is now used to wants to see um and i think that's that's inevitably influencing us um and i think that that grammar the audience is much more comfortable with now um and so i think that's influence, influencing us as well i guess the other thing that that people are wanting is a sort of pretty instant sort of very big sort of grabbing proposition uh that you can promo that's a very clear indication of of what the series and what the idea is and i think that that's something what have we got over them i think to some extent is talent i think talent has become increasingly important to us big talent um and i think that's a weapon that we have because it feels like a domestic uh attraction so again if you look at something like you know ben fogel in chernobyl I wouldn't have commissioned a, a, a film about Chernobyl just as is the story. But when you, you know, when I'm looking at New Lives in the Wild getting over 2 million viewers a week and thinking, how do we do this story? We've got this extraordinary access. How do we tell this story? Then putting Ben in that as an, ex, as an immersive sort of experiential film um, makes it feel like you're taking them on, but on you know, domestic territory. So I think that that's, that's certainly the case. And I think we'll be doing more of that kind of thing, more sorts of feature, more box set type um, immersive experiences. But we'll still be doing lots in Specialist Factory as well. Yeah. Nice. And Danny, how about you? I think we, um, I mean, look, there's, there's loads that we've learned from, um, 
from Netflix, um, which I'll come into in a sec. But I think we have to be careful that we are all like, God, it's, Netflix is extraordinary and we all have to try and ape what they're doing. Um, and they're a huge success in everything they do. I don't think that's entirely the case with everything. And I think we have to harness what we are really good at and what we can be really good at. And Bij and Guy have touched on a couple of these points too. And I think our thing, particularly us, but also the BBC actually, is we are able, and Netflix are not able really to do this, is to tackle subjects that are probably slightly more challenging, probably more contemporary, probably things that are happening in the world right now that we can capture and make programs about and get audiences to. They can't do that because they're just the very nature of their, the way they're set up, their business model is. Um, so I think we have to harness a lot more of that, of what we are set up to do as public service broadcasters and free to air. I think we have to um, exploit that more. I think where we definitely have learned from them is the, the point that Guy made is, is, is some of the storytelling. I mean, I look at their true crime stuff and some of it with real envy. I think some of it is extraordinary. Tiger King, you mentioned, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I think is really good and really well made. And what they've really um, nailed is how you bring alive retrospective stories, but make it feel like it's unfolding, the story's unfolding in front of you. That is clever. I mean, you could argue it's not. We have done it in the past and we've all channels have done it but they've really nailed it as a sort of genre. And I think that is something we should definitely learn from and have learned from and are starting to do a bit more of because I think audiences are less obsessed about the new, the unfolding, the actuality-driven stuff. We will, of course, do loads of that still, like 999, like Police Custody, um, Catching a Killer, etc. But we, um, But I think that is a great learning curve for us. I think the, the challenge we've got with Netflix, 100%, is they are attracting off-screen talent in a really big way that is getting harder for us. So they're attracting editors, they're attracting execs and directors, of course, and producers. So how do we get those those that big talent back to be making stuff for us? That's a real, really big question for us, I think. I think also the other thing I would say is that thing that I feel incredibly proud of having worked at the BBC and now Channel 4, I think honestly think we've got the best legal and compliance teams in probably the world. That's partly because we're regulated by Ofcom, right? But it's also the way that we are pushed to stay close to the truth in storytelling and run as, 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 as close to the wire as we can without falling into untruth or... Um, or illegal sort of uh, or audience or viewer trust issues, which I think sometimes that could be questionable with some of the streamers, not to name names or titles of programs. But I do think there is an issue there sometimes. And I think I feel proud that all of us probably on this call here, we work for broadcasters that are, are work with some of the best lawyers and compliance teams that keep us out of trouble, but also mean that we are our viewer trust that relationship is still retained is still really high yeah absolutely and i think let's move on to subject matter i mean we've got you know commissioners all of three of you have commissioned just such a wide range of things you know there's true crime medical access celebrity-led journeys travel log you know what are you kind of finding is overdone what do you have plenty of appetite for and what do you think is due a reinvention um guy if we start with you because you also have a clip for this answer yeah um just to sort of press press you the clip really um i think that you know you have to know your viewers we're totally driven by what our viewers want um and i think that there are you know there are a load of sort of classic areas which we will you know we will always do as Danny says you know they're, whether they're our big sort of crime series police hour of duty whatever uh, or our other types of factual uh, we'll we will still be doing medical we will still be doing um, access we'll still be doing crime we'll still be doing specialist factual um, 
and I think that one of the things about access is when you've, you've you know you've got a bedrock of a lot of series that are returners so you know we've now got five or six police shows for example that are all returning which some three of which we started first last year in format terms um our duty suspect number one things like that um and it's so how do you do you you've got those you've got your critical conditions you've got your you know you've got your a and e you've got that you know, you've got those kind of genres which you definitely need because they're ratings bankers and the audience love them the thing about axis is where do you go next uh and how do we marry that with our populism um and because we're not going to do just a series about a school or but you know it, we we have to have something that i think is feels really strong and unique for the audience and we've got a series coming up which this clip is from which is commissioned from Art Lab by Lucy, actually, um, Lucy Willis. And uh, it's called Submarine. And it just feels like a new space to be in. Uh, if you take what works, we know that military has worked well with warship. We know there's an, we know our audience love to find out, go behind the scenes, uh, how do things work? And it feels like a new territory for us uh, and a new place. So yeah, this is a clip from uh, series coming up, Submarine. It's tense at the minute. It's just a case of, you know, playing a long game and trying to find it. I've got a new one here. Roger. That's a new one now, right? Bearing 081. Oh. Contact. Joe can hear something moving. It's below the surface, 12 kilometers away. That is loud. Friendly flank contact. Bearing 231, thin over contact. It's exactly the kind of sound he's been trained to expect from an Oscar submarine. Port side contact. Port side contact. And it's coming nearer. Standby classification. All eyes are on Joe to make the right call. So yeah, so that's submarine. I think the other thing that we're, I think true crime has changed as well. We've talked a lot about that. Um, I think a year ago it felt a little bit, um, you know, moribund really, the same old stories. Uh, I think now we've we've moved on and the true crime slate is sort of feels very vibrant and uh, something that, again, when you're scheduling in terms of box sets, uh, and events, I think that's become increasingly important for us. So, yes, it's a staple, but I think it's been rejuvenated. Um, we've also seen our blue light shows doing really well, um, and I think that that's something to do with innovation. I think we reworked it. Um, we, but we we rely on those staples. I think all the terrestrial channels do. Uh, so it's a case of rethinking it, thinking about what the new formats are. What are the new innovations that we can bring in, whether it's for their duty, it's the sort of ticking clock through the hour, sort of almost as live. Um, and I think that those those new formats have been very, very important for us to keep to keep fresh the classic genres. Um, I think celebrity led journeys, the travelogues, uh, you know, that's been a bit obviously foreign travel has been difficult. And I think the um, I think bigger talent is coming to us now. Um, and I think that there is uh, a way of doing travelogue, which makes it again a big tentpole part of our schedule, and we're we're continuing to work at that. And I think it still excites the audience. Um, so, I, and it's and I think also we could think about how we can use big name uh, journeys as counter scheduling devices. We do we rely on counter scheduling a lot. 
Um, and I think those sort of big event pieces with the right names uh, can really work. So again, that's using what is quite a staple in, in, in an innovative and new way in terms of scheduling. Um, but I, and I think there's a pent up demand for that. I mean, whether it's because people want to see around the world or they want stories from different places, I think that that's something that's going to be uh, coming through. Um, I think we've been having success with some heritage, you know, bringing brands back. Uh, if you look at 10 Years Younger, I mean, that's a fantastic show and has been very, very successful for us. And so I think there is, you know, I, I don't think we should uh, kind of walk away from the staples. I think that would be a mistake. Um, and I think there is still appetite. The key thing is to is to reinvent and reinvigorate. Um, and I think that that's what, you know, that's, that's what we've been doing. Brilliant. And how about you, Danny? What are you, what is there lots of appetite for at C4 and what is due a reinvention? Um, we also rely heavily on medical um, crime, um, of which we will continue to do. I mean, we are trying to reinvent, particularly in the crime space and looking at doing some historic crime series. We're also looking at doing, um, trialing a couple more potential new returning series at 9 p.m. in that crime space, which will come out next year. Um, there's clearly more police custody. I mean, police custody grows and grows and grows. It's absolutely huge and is doing um, around the 5 million mark per episode with consolidated and VOD viewing, which is really important important and very important for a younger audience. I think for medical is really interesting for us because A&E continues, of course, um, and still does very well. And we're moving A&E to um, be filmed outside of London for the first time in its now 10 year, it's just turned 10 years A&E history. Um, but we're also doing a new medical box set, which we announced a week or two ago, um, which is a stripped event, very different from any high octane, um, trying to get a sort of an adrenaline rush across four nights in in a week, and see how that does. We're trying to get the best of both worlds by by stripping it across a week and box setting it, so trying to get all four and channel four numbers pretty high, which is a new thing we're trialing. Um, I think in terms of new space, we've got something in the school um, space that's coming out in August that Labour One are making for us, which is really interesting. It definitely feels different. I have absolutely no idea how that's going to land, but it certainly feels very different. The kids are kind of amazing. It's filming kids in their last year of school and all the decisions that they have to make. And of course it was filmed during the year of COVID, so it's been even more challenging for them and the production. Um, but we, moving into um, coming out of COVID and looking at what we should be looking at from 9 p.m., we really are looking at the world of work, community, sounds such a boring word, but to make it sound interesting, I can't think of a better word, um, but how we work together, I suppose, um, and the world of work and benefits, I think, is a really interesting area. And of course, a really big thing for us next year will be mental health, which we're going to put quite a lot of emphasis on. And I've got a sort of working group in my team now looking at what we should be doing. And that will probably be a combination of, to Guy's point, is sort of famous faces and maybe access series that we'll do next year. There's no doubt mental health is going to be huge. There's going to be a fallout, I think, and a big subject for the country next year and following years. Um, and family, I think, is another is another area. We've also got a massive and part of the reason I've hired Anna Morales to come back to Channel Four is to have a big focus on 10 p.m., which has been a bit of a gap for us, and I've not been particularly strategic in it. If I hold my hands up, and the reason I say that is because. It is a particularly young focus slot and has a very direct correlation with all four. So, or at least it should do. And that is our focus. So, and we're doing a combination of series, mini series, 
part access, some um, and and some single films, and we are very much in the slightly entertainment first, entertainment with purpose. That sounds like a terrible term and probably been used many times before, but we are trying to reinvent 10 p.m. Actually, so Anna is in charge of that, obviously with me, but yeah, but she's 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 doing that. Sounds exciting. And Beach, how about you? What's what are you, what, what are you well, looking for? So, well, I mean, similar to what Danny and Guy said, actually, because the thing is with medical and crime, you know, they are perennials, they're staples, and they do really well with our audience, is the truth. So, you know, we, we were not going to say no to those. I mean, if you look at the success of things like forensics, the detectives reported missing, um, murder 24 seven, you know, that continues and holds strong. If anything, you know, it's grown for those titles. And, you know, as I was saying earlier, what's really key for us is the reinvention and the thinking behind those titles. You know, access is, you know, bloody hard won by Indies. And it's not the access that wins the commission on those subjects, it's the thinking behind it. And each one of those has a kind of clear, distinct selling point and innovation in it. And I think, you know, going forward, Beyond that innovation, I think it will also be interesting to see, like, particularly in the crime space, but also in medical as well, how you give that access real roots and a sense of place, which I think we could do more on. Um, on celebrity, I mean, we've got a good track record on talent-led singles, I would say, that's really grown over the last two years. But um, I think it'd be interesting to think how we convert that talent and what we've tapped into with those singles into scale using that talent. Um, I'm quite poppy by nature and I have a real, I have real envy over series like Gordon, Gino and Fred. You know, it's properly fun ensemble casting, they're fun to travel with. And I think it's interesting to see what Race Across the World has done in that territory. And, you know, I think it's an area to watch in terms of what comes next, because as Guy was saying, if ever there was an appetite for something we haven't been able to do, it's travel and it's who we want to be traveling with and how. And I'd like to see kind of what tips up over the next year in that space. Brilliant. And moving on to kind of funding, um, what role does international co-production play in your strategy and creativity? Because I think, you know, budgets are stretched and a lot of people are saying, you know, they're looking for projects and projects seem to have more than one broadcaster. Um, so Guy, I think you have a cliff as well for this answer. So if we start yes. with you again. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, Copra is something we've always done a lot of in Specialist Factual. Um, and I think we're increasing, we've got a, you know, we've got a, um, a box set on Pearl Harbor, for example, uh, for this year. Um, and it's something that a Specialist Factual has mainly, we've mainly done there. Um, and I think that the, it, what it gives us is extra value. It also gives us scope scale um and i think that that's something that when we when i'm thinking like what is our version of the planets or something like that i mean lucy and i went um not long ago to the states to talk to um all of our potential co-producers and it was it was really sort of trying to think how can we just make make it bigger it's not just about getting a little bit of money it's about how do we push into that big factual space uh, and how do we do that with partners how do we manage that relationship because uh, i think that's the thing is to sort of make it work for us and that brings with it all sorts of conversations and potential you know bumps in the road when it comes to sharing editorial uh, and we don't what we don't want to do is do series that look like they're acquisitions it's really important that we make channel five feel uh, uniquely kind of um, uh, a, a UK channel uh, which is which is for its audience and it's not something that feels like perhaps you know something that we might acquire so I think that's that's very difficult and I think also we you know we need to remain popular um, and attractive it's and one of the things that I've been working on which is the clip is working on this for ages with Smithsonian uh, is the series from uh, Upland from Mike Smith and Dave Dolishoga's company about slavery. And this is something that is a sort of, I suppose you might call it a sort of exercise in the popular and important, I suppose is the way I might look at it. Um, it needs to work on a level that the, you, know, you might say the BBC Two slight audience would buy into, because that's 
we hope, and the people who are going to come to our channel, as they increasingly are, you need to look at Kew Gardens last weekend and work that out. Um, and well, let's just just run the clip, and hopefully you see what I mean. I know what part of Barbados my mother was from, but there's still so much that I don't know. There's still so much about my past that I don't understand. There's still so many pieces of the jigsaw that are still missing. The history of this island is bound up with the history of slavery. And David knows it must be part of his heritage. But he was never taught anything about it in school. It's quite extraordinary that I was never at any point in my educational history taught any of this. This is not on the curriculum anywhere. In England, it is a particularly buried part of history. I wasn't taught anything about slavery. It wasn't until I developed an interest in my past myself uh, that I went to Dudley Library to find books about slavery. And there were books there, but we just weren't being taught it in school. As well as it making me upset, it also makes me angry that there has just been no discussion about it. My sense of displacement erased. A sense of a dislocated identity erased. We need to be able to talk about it and not feel that it's just too much shame for the British. No, let's find out what happened. Thanks. So the other, I suppose the other areas we're thinking about um, I mean, one of the things is, 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 I suppose you might call the threat of the paywall. And I think that uh, as the streamers and the big corporations move into uh, the streaming business in such a big way as we're seeing, that hoarding of content or keeping content means co-production might be more difficult um, because I think that the rights issues are going to invade. So I think we have to be aware of that. And I suppose the other, I mean, the other part of co-production, it's not really co-production, but is, is in other forms of funding for Factual. Um, and we're certainly uh, getting more involved in AFP and commercial partners, probably on the sort of slightly lighter end of Factual um, in sort of making you know, much more sort of domestic formats. And I think that's something that's going to, you know, take up some of that, um, some of that slack, if you like. Um, so I think there's going to be a bit more of that. Uh, you know, you have to be careful and considerate about how you do those shows, but they are now going to be part of the mix, I think, in PSP Factual. And I think other channels, I mean, certainly Channel 4 seem to have been going down that road too. Mm. Yeah, so Danny, if you want to take it away, that led you quite nicely into... Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, guys. Right, you know, we um, it isn't just about um, co-commissioning with um, other uh, networks, though that is becoming a big deal. It is about um, other financing. Um, you know, we've got a couple of things at the moment, which are AFP, uh, which is ad-funded, um, brand-funded content, um, and there's all sorts of combinations. We're doing that with uh all sorts of sort of the deals we're doing in terms of percentages about how we fund them but i mean it but guys right it is they tends to be on the lighter side of factual you know we did a whole which was pretty much fully funded we did a um kevin mcleod series last year around green tech um and that was fully funded by vodafone um and so obviously that is uh, appealing when something is fully funded but of course it also has to sit with our editorial strategy too and that is what makes it quite difficult sometimes to land those ideas with the right brands at the right time i think in terms of um certainly international partners is a, is a big thing for us we've commissioned two series with netflix recent fairly recently um we have commissioned we did lucy the human chimp which was on telly about three four weeks ago that was with HBO Max. We're doing Generation 9-11, a really big feature doc, and that's coming out. And that is with a whole bunch of US partners that Arrow are making for us. So we've got um, we've got a, a lot of examples of it, and we would like to do more. But it but it is worth saying that it isn't 
it's exactly the same point Guy made, really, which is this isn't really about um, so it's because we've got lower tariffs per se. It's because we are trying to get um, more premium content, I suppose, um, onto the channel, which, you know, speaks to the what we were saying earlier about the um, streamers, you know, to how do we get um, that sort of level of that bar of quality and production values and talent making stuff that is competing against them. And one of the ways of doing it, not the only way, but certainly one of the ways is to do co-commissioning. And I think with the right partners, it works really well. I mean, the Michael Jackson, Dan Reed series, that was obviously with HBO. Um, and so was Fosama. So, you know, we, we, when we get them right, we get them right. Mm. That doesn't sure. make any sense. No. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. And um, Bijo, how about you? Um, well, actually, similar to what Guy and Danny said in terms of, you know, it does enable you and unlock being able to kind of, you know, reach that bar in terms of premium content and that, you know, which we know is really important. But I mean, we're, we're really open to it across factual. But on my particular slate, we don't have many in docs. We don't have many international co-productions as a lot of our main output is kind of big British stories. But on things like Storyville, it's all international co-pros. Um, we do, I mean, it, it's, it's a more recent thing for us in docs. So we do have some features in play coming down the line and, you know, a series in that space. But it's something that we're very open to. Nice. And I'm just conscious of the time. So I'm going to take a few of the um, audience questions. So uh, there's a question that says, what level of interest is there in commissioning international documentaries that don't have a direct narrative link to the UK? Um, maybe Beach, if you want to take it away again. <laughs> Um, I think that's harder for us, to be honest. Um, we don't do, I mean, because Storyville deals with a lot of our international documentaries and, you know, they would sit under that strand. I mean, for us, it would have to be a big international event. So things like, I mean, we've got a film on 9-11 coming up, which was, you know, that, that, that's a big world event. It impacted all of us, even if it wasn't a di direct link in terms of, you know, w where the, those events took place. And also, I mean, we do th we've done things like Once Upon a Time in Iraq, but once again, that impacted us back home and you have to kind of feel those ripples. Otherwise, you know, those sorts of films would normally fall into the story of Ostrand. I think for me, for me I mean, I think, um, B, I mean, I think ours is tiny bit different from Beach. I sort of understand that view and I, I think we are we would be up for more um, international stories if the story's right it has to resonate somehow with the UK audience so Lucy the human chimp is a is not a UK story in any way but and neither is three identical strangers but they both did particularly for identical strangers did amazingly well um, and I think if you get the story right and I know Guy used that term sort of world of strange or curious curious I think that's probably right um, and I, I look over at Storyville, I think Mandy's done an exceptional job the last few years, and all the content that's coming out of Storyville it's, it's really, I think it's got some amazing things recently. And I, I look at whether we can restart the model of that at four. And that would be, you know, he's about this, so, he, um, so he's, uh, it's news to him this. But I, I am trying to see whether I can look at a model that has money, if money comes in. Where we are investing in our story. The thing I would say is, go down like collective, um, like a film, a Storyville film, which is more journalistic in its heart. I think it has to be more capery, more lighter hearted that we would go at. So it's more the mold, the mold detective agency that um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was that Storyville film. That is the kind of film we might go in, go in on. So. I think there's a market for it, and I think younger audiences are finding this stuff, and that is cynically the reason why I'm up for trying to find a model that may work on four for it. And Guy, how about you? Yeah, I would, uh, I would, I would just say two two things really. Um, I would say that you should look for a story that really resonates. Danny says I would point you to two things on Channel Five which would perhaps mark it out. I would say Doctors at War, which had uh, a very clear angle in, which was the, just the, um, uh, um, 
the surgeon, the British surgeon, as a way into the stories of the people in the camp. And the other one I would look at would be Ben Fogel in Chernobyl and say talent. And that actually brings us quite nicely because we have another audience question for you, Guy, but maybe the rest of you could speak to kind of talent um, more generally. Um, it says, did Chernobyl come with Ben already attached or did you work with the producer to make the subject palatable for your audience? Uh, it was it was sort of a bit of both. Um, the idea did come with talent attached in the sense that we, we it was always clear that we would need somebody to tell that story, otherwise it wouldn't write. Um, when we thought about it, Ben seemed the perfect person to do it. Uh, and that's why I got four million viewers. You know, it's as simple as that. It's it, but it, it it was always seen as an immersive experience. And uh, Fida, how how do you like talent to be brought to you for your documentaries? Is it something that you can work with producers on, or would you rather that they come with it already attached? It, it it's a bit of both. It's it's not kind of one size fits all. I think you know, there's ideas that have come in where the, um, the talents have been attached to the idea. I mean, I think of um, uh, Sort Your Life Out, which has got Stacey Solomon on it. And, you know, that idea came in first. And Stacey was, you know, I mean, when they came up with Stacey um, at the helm of that series, it was a perfect fit. You know, it made total sense. And, you know, she's been brilliant on it and the audience she's brought to it and just how bloody useful the series is, I discovered in my own personal life. Um, but, she, but bringing that new audience to a subject like that on BBC One is really key and really important for us. Um, but there's other stories where you, where the talent comes in attached to it, where, you know, for example, but, you know, there's ideas that come in with Nabeen attached to them, where we're investigative and journalistic and, you know, you very much want, you know, his voice at the helm of them. So I think it's, it's not a one size fits all. It depends on what it is, but there's certainly subjects. And I'd say in particular on some of our kind of single films where, you know, people pitch territories and, you know, and they're important subjects to get to. But I think that when you look at something like Zara McDermott's film on revenge porn, you know, revenge porn has been pitched before. Um, but it's hard to get to and it's hard to land with the audience we wanted to land with. And then when you've got Sarah McDermott, someone who we know the audience connects with, telling that story, something that's kind of played out very well in the tabloids, suddenly you bring together, you, you, you just make it tangible for the BBC Three audience, which is really important to do. So, you know, it, it's a bit of both. I wouldn't say it's, it, it's just one size, really. And Danny, how about you? Yeah, I think quickly. My, I mean, my strategy four is sort of two, is, is a two two prong thing, which is one is I've been trying to find. You know, I'm envious of sort of Stacey Dooley and Louis Theroux and um, the Beeb. Uh, and when I came in, thought we need to find a couple of more permanent type of hosts, um, for want of a better term, to to do documentaries that just get audiences to harder to reach subjects in a way. And so we've obviously trialing, we've, we've, we've commissioned a series with Yinka Bikini, who obviously did our that single film about um, Damalola Taylor. And then we've got Alice Levine doing a series with Louis execing, Louis through execing actually. Um, so I broadly got one into a sort of more journalistic prime space and one in a more weird weekend sort of, uh, um, kind of space, work out who's who in that space. Um, but then also, I think the it's there's no doubt. I mean, you know, guys talked about Ben Fogel. Definitely would have probably maybe doubled that audience for that. I don't know, guy. Maybe I'm thinking out of turn. But certainly, look at Jesse Nelson doing, you know, mental health on BBC Three. That got a massive audience, and there's that wouldn't have got the same audience had it not been Jesse doing that. So there are lessons we need to learn. Davina McCall doing menopause. There's just no way that would have got the same audience had Davina not been fronting that film. So. I think we probably are going to do a bit more of that too with the right person on the right subject that's relevant to their experience. Amazing. And I wanted to know, do you have sort of different strategies for attempting to attract specific audience demographics? You know, true crime tends to be very female and a bit more millennial, whereas something that's a bit more access, blue light, may skew a bit older. Um, so is there any like specific strategies for attracting certain audiences. Um, Bijal, I think you've got a clip um, as well. I think, 
I've got a clip as well. Yes, I have. Um, so I think, I mean, we're always conscious of the audience that we're bringing to, you know, different subjects and, and to our channels and to iPlayer. And, you know, that's whether it's kind of series or singles. And but it's not just the young audience, which I know is crucial, but it's also making sure we're not just serving the same audience that we kind of super surf at times. So it's, and you know, for us at the moment, it's quite key is um, getting to the modern mainstream audience and, you know, just kind of delivering to the whole of the UK. So I think, you know, th and we consciously think about that at the point of commission, like things like Murder 24 seven and the attitude and tone and the approach of that series brought a new audience to BBC two, but it didn't lose the Heartland audience. And that thinking had been done up front. And I think, you know, we're also kind of really building on now, not just for our normal commissioning structure, which delivered series like the murder trial of um, the murder trial, the disappearance of Margaret Fleming from Firecrest, but also in the process of co-commissions with the nations for BBC Two and BBC Three. So we're looking to, you know, really make sure we're reflecting, you know, stories from across the UK and diversity of voice. But in terms of 16 to 30 floors, of course, a lot of that is on BBC Three, which is aimed squarely at that audience and thinking who are we appealing to and who is really talking to that audience. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, Zara McDermott on revenge porn was someone the, you know, the three audience could connect with and talent, properly immersive talent who are not kind of, you know, tag on talent, but actually, you know, that is their story. They've got a journey to go on is going to bring an audience to difficult subjects, which is really important for us to do on three. But it's all, and they're going to connect with them differently. But, you know, similarly on some of the bigger fact templates like Glow Up, which does brilliantly for us, you know, that's actively looking at areas that young people are interested in. And, you know, things that are happening that can kind of, you know, you know on the online space and the social world that can be blown up into something much bigger and genuinely be a new telly offering. And I mean, in Glow Up, I think, you know, what's brilliant about that is when we can celebrate young people, you know, they're young heroes who, you know, they excel at something that they do. And I think the diversity on the new series of Glow Up has been really important as well. And in terms of its neurodiversity. So we're kind of consciously looking for things that actually, you know, that young people are going to connect with, both in terms of the people, you know, at the heart of those programmes or kind of contributors and those kind of backstories they've got, but also the kind of more mainstream talents that, you know, that they know from the, you know, different programmes or in the music industry or tabloids. And I think that, you know, one of the other things is our new director's films, which um, we're going to show a clip of, you know, showcases, you know, lots of stories with a very young centre of gravity in each of those, you know, they, they deal with big subjects, you know, they're not kind of small stories that they're telling, um, but they find a brilliant, unique and individual way to kind of connect with young audiences. So it'd be great if we could show a clip of that. I was in love with Jordan and it took me a long time to have the courage to say she was abusing me. I thought, I'm gonna go, that's it, I'm, I'm done. It kind of hit home that this is happening to us, like we're not just watching the news, this is our brother. You gotta take action. I wanted people to see people making change. Before you release any music, I'm gonna have to go through it with the police. I imagine like you guys become something and you know all the bullying will stop so I, I know that's a super long show real apologies um so we couldn't show all of it but um but for me i mean one of the films in that show reel um is a film called defending diggity and in what it did for me i mean it immediately kind of it, it, it stood out very quickly to me when it kind of came in from an indie it gained traction at the channel really quickly and it's because there was a proper story attached to the timing of digger being released from prison when he was a pivot, at a pivotal point in his career and the next steps that he took and it wasn't framed around what i feel is you know quite a tired old story of will he won't he go back to prison you know it it had the other dimension of him having a cbo attached to his release where the police literally policed his lyrics, which takes you into a much more interesting space on how, as an artist, you square what can be deemed a censorship of your art form, your way of making a living and your identity, all these kind of key things to a young person and move on. And what was clear in that, in that pitch was the themes it spoke to would speak to an audience we don't reach out to enough. You know, and, you know, Emma Wakefield and Lambent and at Lambent Productions and Mary Mohammed, who directed that film, created something really special that I felt was really fresh and told our, you know, our audience a story. But we don't often hear in a musical form that's been labelled as problematic in much of a press without understanding the human kind of stories behind it. And, you know, I think that's what I think is quite exciting also is 
I remember like, you know, after it landed, it kind of popped up daily on many ripoff versions of YouTube. I mean, they were pulling down six versions a day. And I remember complaining to my team saying, yeah, everyone's watching it on YouTube. And, you know, Max and my commissioning team was like, Beach, that's a compliment. It means you're going beyond the people who already have iPlayer accounts. You're getting to a whole new audience. So we've got, we know there's an appetite for it. So how do we bring more of that kind of, you know, content to the BBC? So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of looking at ter both territories and the treatment of it and who's telling those stories. Mm. And uh, Danny and Guy, maybe you could say a few quick words about what audiences you're looking to attract and how you attract them. I know we're running out of time. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I mean, our, our, you know, we're the, we're the young, we're the youngest free to air channel. Our emphasis on 1634, we've always said that it still is, and that's why we put so much. We're sort of we're putting so much emphasis on all four um, about how we whether we commission with that in mind. I mean, we are massively data driven now. I mean, every pitch meeting we go to, we, we're using research way more. We're using data much more about who our audience is, what has done well previously, what are the learnings we're doing, much more testing of titles and all of that. So we are, um, I mean, Young's is our, is, is, is our biggest thing. So for me, 10 p.m., all four is, is a really big deal, is, is what I would say. And this, you know, when we're doing, we've got a short form strand, which we've had for the last year, called True Stories, which is now monetizing so that's that's also an indicator where we are trialing talent on and off screen um as well um using it for that purpose but also it is doing a separate job as increasing the brand of channel 4 to a younger audience so we're doing that is our big emphasis there's no doubt and guy yeah i would just um be quick i know we're running out of time but i think you know we're we're more sold on abc ones now um and what's interesting, I think, is that that's working really well. I mean, if you look at our top 20 shows, 16, 18 of them are hitting the ABC One targets now, which is like, great. But what's also interesting is that we have some more down market shows, uh, which are an important part of the schedule. And what's interesting is it's one of the key drivers on my five. So the uh, what we're doing is, in a way, is we're we're really servicing that audience. They're big they're hit shows, you know, Bargain and Brits in the Sun and Rich House, Poor House, all those sort of shows, but they're doing really well on my five. So we're balancing both the ABC ones on the main channel, which are achieving what we want, and we're also bringing in that via my five, which obviously is a really important thing to, to grow and, and consolidate. Brilliant. Um, so I think we are officially out of time slash overrun. So I just want to say a big thank you to all three of you for joining me today. Um, I hope everyone's found this very informative about factual. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.